Hello everyone and welcome to the 2017 British Grand Prix race discussion with five moments from the race that we're going to discuss here after what was again quite a fairly sedate uh, British Grand Prix but one which ended with an incredibly climactic last couple of laps with tyre failures again dominating the story of the British Grand Prix. Um, but before we get to all of that Let's start with the start, where uh, Lewis Hamilton, uh, we had an aborted start because Jolien Palmer's uh, Renault had a hydraulic problem. He ground to a halt uh, just coming into Stowe uh, on the formation lap, so we had an extra formation lap. And uh, that resulted in uh, a few people having to uh, manage brakes on the grid for the second start. Sebastian Vettel's rear brakes caught fire. Uh, the, the, uh, I think Sergio Perez was close to having his front brakes catch fire. Uh, and uh, but the five red lights carried on and uh, when they went out Lewis Hamilton got a perfect start led away from pole position uh, Sebastian Vettel he lost out uh, to Max Verstappen um, Kimi Raikkonen uh, started second he let, he moved off into second place Verstappen probably had the best start out of everyone in the top 10. Valtteri Bottas had a great start as well. And there was a nice little battle uh, through farm into uh, through farm into village and then into the loop as they hit, headed down the Wellington Strait where Verstappen and Vettel and Raikkonen were all going at each other trying to get track position uh, because it was so critical to the race start. And while Lewis Hamilton was just walking off into the distance and no one was going to see him again for the rest of the race. There was then down into Maggots and Beckett's there was a collision between the two Toro Rosso's pretty much ended both of their afternoons where Danny Kvyat picked up a drive-through penalty uh, for quite a clumsy collision. Um, I thought the drive through was a little bit harsh. He didn't get it for the collision itself. He got it for uh, a dangerous re-entry to the track. It was, a, it was a bit of a racing incident but I see why Kvyat did get the penalty. Uh, he tried to go um, he got, he got overtaken into Cops by Sites, but got a much better exit. Pulled to the left-hand side, which is sort of the inside line for Maggots, but then becomes the outside for the for Beckett's. In in a way, it's a weird complex of corners, and um, yeah, he kind of got shoved out onto the curb. And what Kvyat should have done was come off the gas and then taken the escape road. And what he did try to do was just try to hang it in there lost it on the curb and took him and his teammate out of the race. Uh, Kvyat stayed in the race, uh, but got a drive through penalty was at the back anyway. Quite a chaotic start, which brought out the safety car. Number two, Vettel versus Verstappen. Now, in, you know, we're about half distance into the race. Sebastian Vettel's still struggling to get, uh, get past Max Verstappen's Red Bull. And boy, oh boy, did it lead to a incredible fight between the two of them. Vettel got right in the toe, going down the hangar straight, down in towards Stowe, ducked to the left, then threw itself to the inside. And we saw similar moves in the in the uh, F2 race, with a car ducked to the inside at the last minute, and ended up on the grass and in the wall. Vettel, I thought the same was going to happen. They got just about squeezed it up the inside. They almost made contact on the apex. They both ran off the track in Vale, and it just, and it was just such an incredible battle as they went down in towards Club, and um, and Verstappen <laughs> held the inside line, shoved Vettel out of the road, and hung on. It was just a great battle. There was a few more times where they were going side by side into Stowe, and it was just great to watch. And as I said, it was quite a sedate British Grand Prix, but it was providing such great action. As Sebastian Vettel, he was having a tough weekend, he was having a very tough race, he was doing everything he could to try and get past Max Verstappen. Those two have just had so many battles the last year or so, and it was great to watch. And uh, it, it then sent it, it believe, incredibly, little did we know at the time, but that battle, where Vettel would then undercut Max Verstappen in the pit stop phase would have huge ramifications at the end of the race. Which brings us swiftly to point number three, which was the climactic end. Two laps to go, everything's kind of settled down. We're just waiting for Daniel Ricciardo to catch and pass uh, Nico Hulkenberg, who was struggling with the D-rating car. Next thing you know, they cut to a shot of Kimi Räikkönen being overtaken by Stoffel van Dorn, who's unlapping himself. Incredibly, the front left tyre on the Ferrari had um, delaminated, and the carcass of the tyre was starting to come off, and uh, it was just incredible to see the Ferrari, which had just cr 
basically just been cruising around in second place, just watching for Bottas behind. All of a sudden, um, it looked like Kimi Raikkonen was might not even be in the top five. It was incredible. The air was still in the tyre, but the rubber and the carcass of the tyre was just coming off it. He had to pit, um, and the next thing you know, we see a shot of Sebastian Vettel um, in in the gravel trap. Max Verstappen in the pit lane as well, as tyres started to fail. Incredibly, Daniel Ricciardo did 30 laps. Uh, I think it might have been 33 laps on the super soft compound tyre, and then all these guys who'd done. Uh, roughly around the same sort of stint length on the soft tyre were having failures left, right and centre. Vettel had already majorly locked up his front left tyre um, battling Valtteri Bottas. So it wasn't much of a surprise that Vettel had a tyre problem. He'd complained about, he'd said on the, on the radio about five or six laps before that the front tyres were finished. They carried on, they should have pitted. And in the end, it put Sebastian Vettel down to seventh place. We all thought he might have been out of the points completely, as uh, the, the Vettel was unlucky as the, the air completely went out of his tyre. Um, and it's, we'd seen it uh, blistering being a big factor in the Austrian Grand Prix. It was again this weekend. And it was a result of blisters that caused a late pit stop for Verstappen and, and then punctures for Vettel and Raikkonen. Interestingly enough, though, both Ferraris suffered... And, and uh, although Verstappen did as well, but Verstappen's pit stop was precautionary, nobody else suffered uh, tyre problems. It was a marginal one-stop. The safety car at the start pushed everyone to a one-stop. And in, it, it's one of those, if it's marginal, sometimes it goes right, sometimes it doesn't. Echoing back to Spa 2015 with Sebastian Vettel. So it was a chaotic end to the race. And Lewis Hamilton was there to take the chequered flag while tyres were failing left, right and centre. Uh, it was a, quite a crazy climactic end. Ricardo got Hulkenberg right at the end as well uh, because Hulkenberg had a D-rating car. And uh, yeah, so much action happening in the last two laps. It was a shame that it wasn't spread out across the 51 laps that we had. Number four, driver of the day. Again, a few more candidates for driver of the day. Um... The man who won it, the man I voted for, was this man here, Daniel Ricciardo. Started in 19th, finished 5th in the end. Incredible race, and that was despite taking a nice trip through the, the, the grass and gravel on the exit of Luffield uh, very early on into the race. Uh, it was a great drive from Daniel Ricciardo. Strategy worked well for him. He had a very good pace. Imagine what he could have done today. He probably could have been on the podium um, in the end. Uh, if he hadn't have had that, the, the gearbox penalty and the problem in Q1. Um, so a bit disappointing for Daniel Ricciardo in that respect. His run of podiums comes to an end. But he still gets driver of the day. Small consolation and it was a great result for him in the end. Nico Hulkenberg, he got P6. Uh, somehow uh, the D-rating car with people flying off the road everywhere. Uh, it was a very good drive, very measured drive from Nico Hulkenberg. Very, very good from him, and he just cements himself as that number one in that Renault team, just showing that he, he's the man at the moment to lead Renault's charge. It was a great result ahead of Force India, ahead of Haas, and some much-needed points with Jody and Palmer not in the points, uh, not even in the race. He's the only man scoring for Renault, and if they're to push themselves up the table, especially while Toro Rosso were in a bad run of form, um, it's a big result for Renault and for Nico Hulkenberg. And another man I should give it, I'd probably give it to would be Valtteri Bottas. Started ninth, finished second, was quite fortunate with Kimi Raikkonen's tyre failing, but it was still a very good race. Again, strategy worked very well for him. But the main driver of the day, the main man, was Daniel Ricciardo. And finally, number five. We look to the Hungarian Grand Prix in just a couple of weeks' time. Uh, the championship lead down to one point now between Sebastian Vettel and Lewis Hamilton. And boy, is this going to make for an exciting Hungarian Grand Prix because who is going to lead the World Championship going into the summer break? What happens at Hungary could have a huge impact on what we see at uh, Spa Francorchamps um, for the Belgian Grand Prix. Um, we go to Hungary, it's a track where Lewis Hamilton, I think it's his most dominant circuit on the calendar. Uh, it's one of, if not the most dominant for him. He's had a lot of poles, a lot of wins there. And I tell you what, on the back of this result, you'd say he's definitely the favourite going there. Very, He's always got a couple of tenths in his pocket going to the Hungarian. Uh, Sebastian Vettel has only won there once. That was in 2015 for Ferrari. Could very do with getting back on the top step of the podium. Um, 
And Sebastian Vettel hasn't, hasn't won a Grand Prix since Monaco, I don't think. So he needs to get himself back on the top step. Hungary would be a good way to end the first half of the season. Red Bull, could we finally have that three-way fight? We've been waiting for it all season. And if it's going to happen at all in the rest of the season, it's either going to happen at Hungary or it's going to happen at Singapore. Will it be at the Hungarian? We're expecting a big uh, update package from Red Bull. Can that put Verstappen and Ricardo into the mix? If it does, we can have a great race. Hungary can always make a great Grand Prix. Sometimes it doesn't quite work out. Last year was one of those, but usually it will create quite an exciting Grand Prix and I can't wait for it. Uh, Hungary, two weeks time, it's going to be a cracker. So guys, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Uh, what did you think of the British Grand Prix down below? Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I will be back next week. No idea what's, uh, what's coming up next week. Do remember, check out yesterday's video, the F1 book review, where we review Michael Schumacher, The Edge of Greatness by James Allen. Well worth checking that video out. Uh, the link will be in the end credits in just a second. So until next week, guys, I will see you around. Goodbye.